Welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm your host, Eugene Edwards, with yet another Backyard Haircut. And today we have an awesome show lined up for everyone. We have two very talented musicians who are also siblings. So today we're going to talk about playing music with your family members. Our guests are going to be performing some songs live, and you won't want to miss it. So let's get straight to it. To help me out today, please welcome my guests, Molly and Sammy Miller. Hello. Hey, Eugene. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hey, look at that, look at that snazzy background there. Yeah, we did it uh, when quarantine started that weekend. We were like, if we're going to be stuck here, we may as well make it look good. or Lift the mood. Yeah, we got teddy bears and tricycles. and Yeah, good is a relative term. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we, well, well, we'll discuss which one of you is, is the decorator later, deeper into the show. Uh, mm -hmm. you, have, you guys have quite the resume, so let's give the audience a quick rundown. Uh, Molly, I should say Dr. Molly Miller. Um, you've toured with artists such as Jason Mraz, uh, the Black Eyed Peas, you're chair of the guitar department at Los Angeles College of Music. Um, and also you're in the house band for uh, the, the the TV show, The Bachelor. Yeah. Right, is this right? Yeah, yeah. The Bachelor's new TV show, Listen to Your Heart. Yeah, that's- Oh, oh Listen to Your Heart. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they yeah. go, yeah, that's, I see. Good gig. Um, and Sammy, uh, you're a Grammy nominated drummer. You have a master's degree from Juilliard. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of it. Um, and uh, you've performed with artists like, well, Whitten Marcellus, uh, Iron and Wine, Lee Fields, and you have your own band, Sammy Miller and the Congregation. Uh, and also, you're the first featured drummer on, on Fender Play Live. How does it feel? I mean... You know what? I've had some honors in my life, but nothing like this. This is just top <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, there's like Neil Armstrong and Sammy Miller. One small play for humane <laughs> drum. Yeah. So, yeah, something along those lines. Very well said. Um, very honored to have you guys join us. Uh, real uh, quick, Molly, because we always get gear questions. Tell us about the guitar you're playing there. Yeah, this is my only Craigslist purchase ever. Um, I'm afraid of Craigslist, but my friend helped me find this guitar. I was in the market for a telly before I went on a run with Jason Mraz a couple of summers ago, and I was like, I really want a telly for the road. Um, and we found this on Craigslist, drove down to Orange County, and... Um, it not only does it look snazzy, I love the shell pink, but um, yeah, it's 2008 and the guy uh, like relicked it and upgraded the hardware. And as soon as it, I like put it in my hands, I was like, oh my God, it's mine. Yeah. And I fell in love with it that summer. I have to admit, I'm jealous of that color. Can we hear it real quick? Can you just kind of demo that? Lovely tone, lovely tone. Uh, and Molly, you had actually pitched the, the idea uh, to us finding some other sibling bands on play, which is a really cool theme. Uh, we hadn't really thought about it, um, that there's tons of bands that you can learn on play that fall into this category, and we'll be talking about them later. But it got us thinking about what it means to play music with a family member or family members and how maybe that connection might be more important now more than ever. Um, as always, everybody, we're live, so please drop your questions in the comments and join in the discussion by dropping your favorite family bands in the comments, and we'll see if we can refer to them. Uh, but uh, enough of me and my, my jibber-jabber. Let's kick it off with some music, as always. What do you guys have uh, up for us first? We're going to do a Stone Temple Pilot song called uh, Vaseline. Take it away. Cool. <laughs> Hey. 
that was a real that was a real treat <laughs> haven't heard applause in a long time <laughs> <laughs> thank you well i'm honored i'm honored thank you <laughs> that was tremendous boy you guys are are, are tremendously locked in uh i love that that long that tension and release there in that arrangement uh so stone temple pilots we've got uh dean and robert DeLeo on guitar and bass respectively i think i've got that right um how did you come to that song i mean is that something you guys were always already familiar with or did you kind of come up with that arrangement for today the arrangement we came up with but we wanted to do an stp song because we have a, a personal connection to them uh, when we, so we're, we, the two of us are two of five kids and then we grew up playing music together. We've been playing music together since Sammy was five and I was seven. And so probably when I was like 12, Sammy was 10, our little sister who's, uh, was like eight at the time was taking dance lessons and the dance instructor's boyfriend then now husband is Robert DeLeo. And so we ended up playing the stone, like Robert DeLeo's um, Christmas party. And it was like the biggest deal. Uh, and so we're partial to STP and wanted to do one of their songs to kind of like nod to the sibling, the sibling connection and our connection to them. Cause it was definitely like our ch our childhood band, a highlight for us. That's tremendous. And, and, uh, and, and did you lock in at that point that, that they, there were siblings in that band? And I mean, what did that mean to you guys as you're growing up? I mean, was that, that inspire some sort of creativity in you guys or, or how did that, how did that connect? It, if anything for us, it was like unusual to meet people who weren't playing with their siblings. Like all we knew was like <laughs> the only band we knew was ourselves. And they were like, Oh, we like the Jackson five. They're, they're a band. And they were like, Oh, of course, STP, like they're siblings. Like, and then we started meeting people who weren't siblings playing together. Like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> That's you know uh, not to break the thread, but we already have a question from the audience from YouTube. Someone uh, whose handle is Race E. Um, Molly, are, did you just play that in standard tuning? Yeah, I um, I'm a standard tuning junkie. Yeah. Oh. I should I should ex I should be I don't know how else to say it. Yeah, I I almost exclusively play in standard tuning. I have many quarantine goals, and one of them is like I need to I need to be more into open and different tunings, but. I'm a sucker for standard. And maybe just like start with one string at a time. You know, just just kind of a drop D and spend some time on that. Yeah, he keeps being like, do it. Yeah, but I will. I have to do it a little bit, but not enough. So yeah, standard tuning. Uh, well, thank you, Racy, for that question. Now, uh, but back to now, what do you think playing with a sibling lends to the musical experience? I mean, I mean, you guys you guys play away from your siblings and then you play together. So tell us about about the uh, about that that experience. I mean, it's, it's pretty wild because we tour together. Um, we know we, we're so close, I think, because of it, to be on stage and see each other so vulnerable when you're already so vulnerable within your family, but then to bring that on the road and on the stage. Um, we definitely can read each other better than anyone else, which sometimes can be a challenge. Like when we're out on the road, Sammy would be like, Molly, I can tell you're tired. Go take a nap. You like, don't drink another matcha. You're like too wired. We're like, normally I don't have that person. And I'm like, I'm fine. I'm an adult. I can handle this. But like to have someone who knows you so well on stage and off stage, um, in a musical setting is pretty great. Yeah. I'm sure you have something to say about no, that. No. And I would, that I would, to Molly's point that goes both ways. Like I feel like, um, because a good chunk of the touring we've done is with my band and we have Molly as a special guest and it's like she really doesn't let me put up with any she doesn't put up with any like Sammy Diva stuff there's no divaism because she's like bro chill out like I know <laughs> I saw I know. you get potty trained <laughs> right so it's just like I think all of that stuff it keeps you it keeps you like real and I think uh and it makes everyone else in the group you're part of feel familial because that's the core unit yeah, I feel like the the band with Sammy feels like more of a family than any other sort of setting. And I'm sure because we're family, it's just that dynamic is spread on stage and off stage. Yeah. Now, on, on, on YouTube, someone uh, goes by the uh, handle of HD is asking, uh, did you guys start playing instruments at the same time? I think you said, Molly, you're two years older than Sammy, yes? Yeah. So I always would like say it's like the, the Selena story where like our dad just brought home a bunch of instruments and he's like, you're going to do this. You're going to do that. Um, our first gig was like on my eighth birthday. It was our, our elementary school talent show. But that my parents, my dad really converted our family room into a band room. And it just like immediately we were a band. And after the talent show, it's like, yeah, this is going to keep happening. So, yeah, we started playing at the same time. And, and so you've, you've been playing instruments pretty much all your lives. I mean, how long have you played? 
since uh, he he was five and I was seven. I'm okay, so it started then. I got you. Right now, so. Cool. Now, can we hear another song? Uh, and I want to remind our, our audience that the songs that you hear that you hear today can uh, be learned on Fender Play. Uh, though you, you may not learn how to play them as well as Molly. And by the way, a note to producer Perry: we got to talk about booking these guests that play guitar better than I do. We'll talk about it after the show. Okay, uh, guys, take it away. We're gonna do a song, the uh, the Carter family song. Well, it's 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 a song they made famous called Wildwood Flower. Um, and there is a Carter family song on Fender Play, Can the Circle Be Unbroken, but we're going to do another Carter family song. was tremendous well well done you guys I remember, uh, we were working up an arrangement of that uh kind of sometime last year for dwight's uh, dwight yokum's uh, vegas residency show we're going to start with the carter family show and then go to the history of pretty much country western music because it starts with the carter family that was tremendous and great great uh, great solo there sammy thank you yeah beautiful uh, no, we already have a, uh, a question from YouTube. Uh, uh, Flabjack wants to know, this is a good question. Is there a point playing instruments where you've learned so much about it that you don't practice or study anymore? No, I think the opposite keeps happening where it's like the more I study, the more I'm like, oh my God. But, but I, I used to be overwhelming how much there is to learn. And now I think it's the most exciting thing and why I, I think I can speak why we go to our instruments every day because it's exciting how much you can always grow even if you're like you know my idols are still growing and that's pretty cool yeah i mean i would say the cool the cooler thing about getting better at my instrument is i can be more specific about what it is i want to get better at like when i was younger it would just be people would be like do this do that do that and I'd be like yeah yeah yeah, i do that okay i do that but now it's like mm, this is the thing that i want to get better at and oh this is a song that molly and i should play together because it does this for us and so on and so forth well, now this kind of leads to the next questions coming from our, our audience. Uh, Artichoke Hearts asks, do you guys fight over music stuff? Our biggest fight during quarantine has been in, in the kitchen. <laughs> you know? I, we used to fight more about music, I think. Like, we don't really fight about, God, knock on wood, we don't really fight much about music. Um, I, I think, our, the, like, the respect we have for each other is is pretty deep about um, cause we've seen each other, you know, through all, a lot of most, all of our ups and downs and like, we have a pretty deep respect for each other and how we treat our instruments and our art form. So most of our bickering is more like in the kitchen. In the, okay. 
<laughs> Sam, you tried to enter the kitchen, and it's my zone. And so. Molly's a vegetarian, so for those of you out there, <laughs> artichoke hearts, I know how you feel about it, but for other people, I like to bring different <laughs> meat and different other elements to the kitchen. Thank you, artichoke. Right. Yeah, it sounds like a bat. It sounds like a battle of the sous chefs in there. Uh, as I mentioned, Molly, you pitched this idea to us, uh, and we absolutely loved it. So we went through Fender Play Catalog and found that there's so many bands with that family connection. So we're going to talk about some of the notable ones. Uh, you you already mentioned Jackson 5. Uh, more recently, uh, at the top of the charts, Billie Eilish, because she and her brother obviously work uh, together closely. Uh, the great band, The National, you've got Aaron and Bryce Desner. Um, Van Halen, uh, the Isley Brothers. Uh, we've got, we, oh, uh, the Everly, the Everly Brothers. Here's, here's your... Walk Right Back is on Fender Play Live. Um, Radiohead, uh, that's why I started the show with High and Dry. Uh, we had the Lovell Sisters, who make up Larkin Poe, as guests on this show uh, recently. Um, uh, trying to think of more. Uh, who else? Who else? What other family members like that you Willie can Nel have? Willie Nelson plays his sisters in his band. Sister Bobby. That's right. Very good. That's right. Yeah, there's a Haim, there's a Tegan and Sarah, there's the Pointer Sisters. All, and so, yeah, once we looked into the Fender Play Live catalog, we just, oh, um, the uh, Counting Crows. Oh, not Counting Crows, uh, the Black Crows, sorry. Because uh, they uh, famously went on a tour with Oasis and called it the Brotherly Love Tour, Aww. which I'm sure was very tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> uh, another question. This is from Michael Blankenstein. Good name. Uh, what motivated you guys to take Wildwood Flower to a more, well, to a wilder level? Um, I think because it's just the two of us, we're always trying to kind of change arrangements to, to fit and work for us. Um, so whether it be like a Billie Eilish song, an STP song, or like an old country tune like Wildwood Flower, we're like, what can we do to make it uh, unique to us? Is that fair? Yeah, and even I think Molly and I are both like hardcore students with our instruments. So like, if we're gonna play jazz. We're like, we're let's dig into nineteen twenties, nineteen thirties, like early music. And same with bluegrass stuff. Like Molly spent a long time working on all that finger picking stuff. <laughs> but then I felt like, okay, so what can I do that's not just like playing that as is? Can I work on you know f using that language and finding my own place with it? Yeah. Very well. And you know, we already have uh, artists uh, that are being mentioned from the audience. Uh, we got the the Avett brothers who are on Fender Play, uh, the Osmonds. Uh, ACDC out of uh, Australia, which reminds me, the Bee Gees uh, or, um, or the Neville Brothers, the, one of the greatest American bands ever out of New Orleans. Um, now, mentioning, uh, I think you both have a couple more songs for us, so I'm going to step back and let you guys kind of take over for a bit. First up, is, uh, it's uh, uh, a, a song by a band, one of my favorite bands of all time, but there's definitely a sibling, a sibling rivalry between um, Ray and Dave Davis, I believe. You're going to start with a, a kink song? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what we're going to do here is what we also like to do is just take little parts of songs or an inspiration and use that as an inspiration to do our own thing and not even play the full song. So we're going to do that with Lola. I gave the title away. I don't know if you already gave it away, but I just. That's gave fine. That's fine. Get ready. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. One, two. <laughs>
bar down in old Soho where they drink champagne. It smells just like Coca Cola. C O L A Lola. She walked up to me and she and she asked me to dance and I and I asked her name and she told me that her name was La L O L A Lola. Well now you see I'm not the world's most physical guy But when she squeezed me tight she nearly broke my spine And that's Lola Lola I'm not Now I ain't dumb but I can't understand Why she talks like a woman but she walks like a man That's Lola My one and only little little Lola 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 Fantastic, fantastic! One of my favorite songs of all time. One of my favorite songs. Of all time. Uh, let's keep them. In, uh, can you can you uh, close out the episode with an original? I can't believe it's over. And yeah, we're gonna do one of my. Yeah, well, oh, wow. I'm sorry to interrupt. You're gonna do a song, and then you're gonna sign some homework. So we're not totally done, but just kind of. Okay, cool. We're gonna do a song called "When You See Me" that was written in quarantine, so it's fresh to fresh to the ears. Thank you. 
it's it's not just me clapping. Believe me, there's 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 thousands, millions out there clapping as well. Not necessarily. Uh, people are clapping. <laughs> <laughs> so so tell me about, about that song. I mean, where, where did obviously you said you wrote? Obviously, it's, it's a recent song because you said you wrote it during during quarantine. And did you present that to Sammy or um, in a certain way that where he jumped? Because it's a very dynamic arrangement that you guys have there. Yeah. Yeah, um, both of us write songs. Um, I think we have different different processes, but I'll just pick up my guitar and I like to do this in the beginning of every single one of my practices and just start to play and see what comes out. So it was inspired from one of those moments of just no intention of doing anything except connecting with my instrument. And then Sam and I have been playing a lot. To, we always play a lot together, but during quarantine, um, we've been playing, I don't know if more or less, but we've been playing together a ton. And so... Um, yeah, we, we play songs together. And I was like, hey, check out this new one. And the fun thing is that we, we work on arrangements together. Even if it's my song or his song, I'll be like, oh, that's cool. How about this? And then like trying to come up with parts. So it yeah, he definitely helped shape the song a ton. Way to go, Sammy. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Now, I think it's time we get to some homework. Now, for those that are tuning in for the first time, we're all about learning guitar here. And that means we like to give you guys some things to work on once the episode is done. Molly and Sammy, do you mind helping us out with the homework and assigning it? Sure. I'll, you want to go remember the first one? For all you beginners out there, and there's nothing wrong with being a beginner. I'm a beginner on guitar, and I have a pretty good guitar teacher. Like, <laughs> lessons. Uh -huh. that, that song, uh, the King song we did, Lola. That verse is a pretty simple, uh, or not simple, but it's it's not that many changes, chord changes. So working on that that verse, those changes, those three chords, that E, that A, and that D, and you got yourself a little funky anthem right there. Go do your homework, Namali, you wanna do it? Okay, yeah, what's the next part is for um, the more intermediate players to play S Vaseline by STP. Do it at, on at Fender Play. At, at, and at full speed. Full speed, not, no half time. Although when you're learning it, I would suggest play, practicing it very, very slowly. Just piece by piece. Everybody take it. That's doctor's advice right there. Mm -hmm. um, you want to give the, the ultimate, the, like the, the challenge is to, remember? The challenge for all you people out there that are incredible is uh, go play a song with someone in either your family sibling maybe a parent maybe a child maybe someone who feels like family maybe you've trained your pet owl to, to play music to find someone who you love and play a song together one of these sibling songs that's the double challenge is have it be a sibling song i love it that's a very fun and please uh, if you do feature it on our instagram feed and make sure you uh, uh hashtag us ha hashtag the fender play uh molly sammy please stick around we want to hear what you two are up to these days but first i think it's about time we bring on our old pal and M molly in this case this really is an old pal yours dylan calajuri for some exciting play updates welcome dylan hey wow this is a fantastic show you guys are this is great i really loved the last song too that was uh I was clapping back here. I don't know. You guys couldn't tell, but I was clapping because it was incredible. And like you said, super dynamic. Uh, a lot of people online were talking about, I don't know how you could tour with your sibling because I would have gone completely insane. So we're all just also really impressed with that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Dylan, and, what, are you, what are you playing and can we hear it? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, this is an American professional uh, strat. It's, a, it's in sonic gray. As you can see, it's lovely. It's, it's featured... Oh, Eugene is a copycat. No, this is featured in quite a few different uh, Fender Play videos as well. So let's see. I'll try something. Let's see. There it is. That's it. Nice. That's the and again, whole thing. And again, Dylan, when the script says Dylan plays quickly, you don't have to literally. I just wanted to play every note I know. So I could have got them all in there. That way I don't have to play on the next show. Uh, you're, su <laughs> you're, you're such a giver. What have you got for us today? That sounded great, actually. What, what have you got for us today? <laughs> hey, so do you, I don't know. Can you guys see this shirt? Is it red enough? Can you see it? Okay, good. Uh, this is the Starcaster tee. Uh, right. Uh, and uh, but there's a special deal going on right now with the promo code RIF30 at checkout. You can get this shirt for 30% off. 
that's only for the next 24 hours. It's good through 8.14 or tomorrow, excuse me, Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So StarCaster t-shirt, 30% off. Grab it today. Uh, are you guys ready to hear about the Fender Play giveaway that's yes. going on this week huh? and every week? All right. So if you don't know what it is, each week, a lucky Fender Play subscriber who completes a streak using Fender Play is randomly selected to win the Fender Play giveaway. In order to win, subscribers need to complete three seven-minute sessions using Fender Play, a.k.a. a streak, right? Uh, the more streaks you accumulate, the more entries to win. So if you get five streaks, you got five entries. And winning means you get to pick from uh, strats, tellies, jazz masters, basses, amps, ukes, tons of stuff. Other words said really fast. And so, uh, and it's delivered right to your house. So do you guys want to hear who won this week? I can't wait. I should hope so. Let me get a drum roll or specifically a drum roll, please. <laughs> ah, here we go. Joni A. Joni A won. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations wow. to you, Joni A, and enjoy your new yes. guitar, bass, amp, or whatever it is that you choose. Dylan, what else do you have for us? Yeah, so there's tons of new stuff on the site every week, right? Uh, it's hard for me to select something in particular, but one thing that's close to my heart, I, I, you know, the viewers may not know this, but I went to school right after Molly did. In fact, she was my accountability buddy. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and no, really, honestly, like the, the year before I got there, she was the the big sister, uh, di you know, doctorate person that helped me like an arm coming up from the from above. I anyway, mean. so <laughs> so like basically uh, one of the things we have on the site that that we learned while we were in school and, you know, at some point or another is something called the cage system. And it's a really important way to learn guitar. It's a chord-based way to learn it. So this is the idea of learning how to, how to play the chords that you know across the neck in multiple different places. And uh, this is also implies to playing scales. So on the Fender Play site, if you go to collections, you have a ton of different collections that you can select there. The cage one is gonna allow you to do, uh, not only play through the chords, but see the scale shapes that surround those root notes from those chords and the excess notes within the scale. So I'll give you a little example. Um, taking a melody and using uh, uh, the cage system through it, so. All right, so basically taking the melody from Satin Doll and then moving it through different cage shapes. It could be a little bit easier than that too. You could just start with a simple uh, a lot of the gospel guitar stuff that comes out of that using a minor seventh shape. You'll learn a, tough, a ton of stuff out of that collections. Check it out. It's definitely worth doing. My, with my private students, by the way, I've been pushing the cage system a lot lately too because they ask me like when you're soloing, like what scales to use and they ask me about scales. And I don't. I'm actually thinking about yeah. what the chord changes are and I work from there. So it's a really great way to for students to um, uh, br bravely go up the neck and use more of the neck so yeah that's a it's a great piece of advice dylan uh and, and thank you very very much for everything uh with the, the updates and the giveaways man thank you thanks molly you guys have been fantastic both of you guys haven't they I, and yes thank you very very much to sammy and molly miller for stopping by and performing some tunes with us we're very very grateful uh and molly and sammy can you tell us what what you have uh going on these days we're working on music together, Sammy, and with Sammy's band, we're brewing some new stuff. So keep an eye on his website, Sammy Miller with SM Congregation. Yes, yeah, Sammy Miller and the Congregation. That website is Sammy Miller Congregation or just SM Congregation. And then I got an album that was supposed to drop last month, but it will be dropping my Molly Miller Trio. I'm, it's postponed to top of 2021. So Molly Miller Trio with my my dear friends um, Jennifer Condos and Jay Bellarose. So keep an eye out. I'm Jay Bellarose. Yeah, they're they're my, they're wonderful my musician. So yeah, the three of us have a trio together, Molly Miller trio, and um, that album will drop soon. And you can, I always update my Instagram at Moody Mill, M-O-O-D-Y-M-I-L-L. Very, very well. Everybody, please go check them out. Uh, and also for all of you watching at home, thank you for spending your time with us. Everybody keep practicing and keep safe and we'll see you next time. Everybody plays out on a G chord. One, two, three. <laughs>